before I solder the three wires from the ribbon cable to the Game Boy Advance motherboard and the three pins to put flux and solder on the unbranded one because I'm going to do a comparison between the funny playing IPSL CD V2 and unbranded ribbons with the brains control. I'm going to measure the wires for the speaker's wires to use thinner ones instead of these ones, which are thick. As you can see, I'm measuring the wire for both of the speaker's wires. And I did this, the two wires, and they're about the same size as the original speaker wire lengths. I'm going to get the coat off of both sides and then tin them with solder, and I'll be right back. After I took the coating off both ends of both of these wires, I'm going to dip them into flux both sides. And then after that, I'm going to put solder on them, which I'm about to do right now. Okay, that's one end. And that's two ends. Both of these ends are now pretend. Now I'm going to move on to the other wire. Same thing. Dip both ends into flux. And then, after that, pretend both of these ends with flux using a solder and iron with solder. Like I'm doing. And ta-da! Now I'm going to get ready to put both these speakers wires onto the speaker, which is the Game Boy Advance P and Nintendo DS speaker. Now I'm going to solder both two of these wires onto the speaker's pads. When I say the speaker, I mean the Nintendo DS original and Game Boy Advance's P speaker. Okay, so that's one speaker. This wire. Oh shoot, hold on just a moment. Now there's really one speaker soldered onto this pad. Now move on to the other speaker's wire. Using my tweezers to pick up the speaker's wire. <laughs> okay, now both of these wires are soldered onto the speaker. I'm going to apply some electrical tape or Kapton tape to protect the wires from falling on off. I'm going to apply Kapton tape onto the speaker's wires, which I soldered the wires from the speaker's pads right here. Okay, I'm almost there. Now I got them. See? It's ready to be soldered to the Game Boy Advance speakers pads right there on the motherboard. As you can see, when I tried to fit a Game Boy Advance's P and an original Nintendo DS speaker into the Game Boy Advance housing, this speaker does not fit because it was originally made for the original speaker. I'm going to need to cut a little bit of plastic right here, so I'm going to be using flush cutters and a hobby knife and some thing to sand down to make it smooth. I'll be right there. Now I am about to cut away some of the plastic which is right here so that the Game Boy Advance SP and the original Nintendo DS speaker will fit in there without any problems. As you can see I'm using a pair of flush cutters to cut away some of the plastic. And now I will be using a craft knife to shave down a little bit of the plastic so it is smooth. By the way, this is a brand new blade for my razor tool. Hmm, maybe I'll cut a little bit more of this. Now I think I'll use the craft knife. Okay, so as you can see, there's a little mark on the outside that indicates it's a modification I did inside the shell. 
Now let me get something to sand this area down that I just cut recently. I'll be using 500 grit sandpaper. I'm going to use something like an air blower to get rid of the dust on, on there. As you can see, this is a little bit noticeable on the outside. That's because, again, I modified this area to, for the Game Boy Advance P and the Nintendo DS speaker to fit in there. And as you can see, it fits in there now. Because I'm going to be using the original D-pad and A and B silicone pads, I want to give them a clean. I'll be using ice purple alcohol to clean the front and the back of both of the silicone pad membranes. As you can see, I am working on the D-pad to get it cleaned up good. Now I'm moving on to the A and B silicone pad. Now I'm going to move on to the back of both of these. doing the back of the A and B silicone pad and now the back of the D pad silicone pad. I'm giving it a good wipe down with ice purple alcohol. Now I'll let that dry up. I will be attaching this insulating film to the back of the metal surface on the back of the screen. The reason I'm doing that is to protect the screen from dust or something. I meant something from shorting things out. There. It's done for the insulating film on the back of the metal surface of the LCD. Before I officially close things up, I want to deal with the three wires which are made for the brightness control. So the select wire will be going to this point here which is TP2. It is in fact a contact point for the select button. The R will go to its R button and the L button will go to its L button right here. While I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, I just did that explanation right now. I'm going to apply some flux on the TP2 pad right there, which I did just now. And I'm going to use some solder to put solder on this point where the flux is. After I solder the wire into that point, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean it. Now I will use some solder to pre-tin the TP2 point right here with my soldering iron. Hang on just a moment. Almost there. And it appears I got it. Now I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean the residual flux up. Now I will solder the select wire to TP2 in which I used flux and solder to pre-tin it. You may want to get a little bit more solder. Or maybe not. This wire is now stuck on this point right there. Now I'm going to move on to the L and R buttons. Okay, I soldered the L and R wires to its right places, and now I'm going to test it just to make sure the brightness control actually does work. So I'm going to put the power slider right there. I'm going to put these metal tabs, which is made for the L and R buttons. Here's the R button. And now, placing the R button into there, and officially now the L button. Now 
let me just put one screw right there. And the screws I'm going to use are from this no cut Game Boy Advance shell. This is a Phillips screwdriver and I'm going to be placing the Phillips screw into this hole right here. The reason I want to test the brightness control right now is that not only I want to test the brightness control on the funny playing IPS V2 ribbon, but also the unbranded IPS V2 ribbon too. So I'm going to put the back plate on right now. Insert two double A batteries. And now turn it on. Whoa, what the heck just happened here? Let me just do something right now. Let me just turn it on. Oh, hang on just a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, now I put a new set of AA batteries in there. When I press select and hold R together, the brightness decreases. And now when I press select and hit, the, ooh, shoot. Let me just fix that one point right there. When I press select for now, um, the brightness increases. Let me just fix that one wire that's working improperly. Just hold on, I'll be right back. I had a better idea when I was soldering the wires to the Game Boy Advance motherboard. I soldered the left wire t from this ribbon cable to TP8 and the other wire to TP9, I believe. No, wait, this is TP9, left, TP8, right. Now I'm gonna test it. Okay, so about that, select holding increasing brightness control without the R button, I fixed it. When I hold the select button, it doesn't increase the brightness, so to increase the brightness, I press the R button. So let me show you the brightness levels on the funny playing IPS LCD V2 ribbon. This is the darkest it'll go. And this is the lightest it'll go. Let me show you the darkest. When I turn it off and turn it back on, it's always on its default brightness setting. There's not brightness control on this ribbon. So I'm going to move on to the unbranded ribbon just to test the brightness control to make sure it works. Um, I soldered the wires from these points on the Game Boy Advance to this unbranded IPS LCD V2 ribbon. When I did this, I desoldered the wires from the funny playing ribbon and then transferred the ends of these wires to this ribbon. That's because I want to test whether I want to use the funny playing or the unbranded ribbon. So I'm going to test it out now. Okay, here's the unbranded IPS V2 ribbon installed. I'm going to press select and hit the L button. And what the heck? When I hit the L button and hold select together, it actually increases the brightness. And when I hold the R button and select together, I decrease the brightness. What the heck? <laughs> anyway, here's the brightness setting that I currently have on when I turn it off and turn it back on again. It saves the brightness. So if I want to have brightness control that I can save the brightness with, I prefer the unbranded one. But even though Funny Playing suggests people when they install an IPS LCD into a Game Boy Advance, Funny Playing suggests to use his ribbon instead of the unbranded ribbon. But again, the unbranded ribbon consists of brightness control. So I'm gonna use the unbranded one. Okay, so I applied capped on tape to the Game Boy Advance motherboard and the unbranded IPS LCD ribbon on the front and the back. I did not capped on I did not put capped on tape on the LCD connector. That's because the LCD connector is needed to connect this ribbon here. So I'm gonna get ready to reassemble at this point. Before I officially reassemble this Game Boy Advance, I want to do this soft camera with the silicone pads. And that is, because I was using rubbing alcohol to clean the black dots on there, I wanna make sure it is not shiny. So I'm gonna do this off camera now. 
After I rubbed the black parts of the silicone pads on both the D-pad and A and B button off camera, I think it's officially time to reassemble this Game Boy. I applied Capitan tape to the 32 pin ribbon and this here to avoid moving the LCD's ribbon in place. I'm gonna put in the D-pad and the silicone membrane in. Now the A and B buttons. By the way, these are buttons that look, that are made from the original mold. Um, I got these from Retro Game Repair Shop. Funny Playing sells these currently. So anyways, got the speaker in, which I didn't study yet. The power light pipe, which is clear that you can see through it. While I'm here, I might as well give one more clean for the button contacts. Don't want to use too much rubbing alcohol, though. Okay, it looks good now. The reason my soldering iron is warming up right now is that I'm going to solder the speaker onto the speaker pads on the motherboard. So now I'm officially ready to put the motherboard in place. The two screws go here and there. By the way, these are Phillips screws. And I'm using the screws that this Game Boy Advance shell came with. Sorry about that noise, it's the fireworks. Anyways, got one of the Phillips screws right here. The two or three holes that the Phillips screw go in, they hold the motherboard to the Game Boy Advance front housing. So now I have two Phillips head screws into their holes. Now I'm going to solder the wires for the speakers pads right here. Just give me a moment. My soldering iron is now warm enough to melt the solder. I'm going to put the solder on both of these pads right here. So now I'm ready to solder the wires to the speaker pads right here. Okay, that's one wire soldered in. And that's two wires soldered in now. All right, now I'm going to put the LR buttons, side bumpers, and the power switch into their place. Okay, so there's the L button and the R button. Left side bumper, right side bumper, and now the power switch. So put the back plate on. Before I screw it in, I wanna make sure it works to test it. Like the speaker to make sure it works. I turn the volume up and listen to this. Speaker's doing good. Let me just test the brightness control. When I press the R button, the brightness goes down. When I press the L button, the brightness goes up. That's kind of weird with the unbranded IPS LCD V2 ribbon. Funny Playing's ribbon, uh, um, the brightness control, when I hold the select and R button, it's supposed to increase the brightness, but on the unbranded ribbon, it decreases the brightness when I hold select and R together. And when I hold select and L, the brightness <laughs> increases. How weird is that? Anyway, I'm just going to test this Game Boy out to make sure all the buttons work with a game called Tetris, which is made for the original Game Boy. So hold on a second. Here's Tetris for the Game Boy running on the Game Boy Advance. And as you can see, the L and R buttons work good. Yep. The select button works. Start button works, D-pad right and left work, A button works, down, left, up, right, and B button all work. Good. So 
So I might as well take the opportunity to decrease the brightness right now just to show you what I mean when this Game Boy Advance IPS LCD ribbon V2 does have brightness control, but the funny playing IPS LCD ribbon doesn't have that. And ta-da! This unbranded IPS LCD ribbon does say brightness control. So now I'm going to screw this thing back in and put the lens on, and I'm good to go. At this point, I'm going to put the model sticker right here, and I'm going to be using the Game Boy Advance IPS LCD model sticker, which I got from Retro Modding in the past. Ooh, it's a little bit crooked. Just let me try to fix that. I want to shun crookeding, which shun means to avoid, reject, or something, yeah. Okay, there we go. Game Boy Advance's Game Boy Advance IPS sticker on the back. And now I am ready to put the lens on. I'm going to be using the full black glass lens that I got from Deadpan Robot. The full black glass lens I got from Deadpan Robot is made for the IPS mod that the IPS LCD is in its centered position. Now peel the protective film off of the IPS LCD's front. This is a good time to blow off any dust off the screen. The dust... Um, the adhesive on the IPS LCD, which is made for avoid getting dust, should do the trick to not get dust on there by far. I'm also blowing the dust off the back of the lenses that I'm about to apply right now. Keep using the air blower to shun dust, which again, shun is to reject or avoid. Now, I will officially put the lenses on. Use my fingers to apply pressure to shun the lenses off uh, from falling out. And now peel the protective film and voila! It's completed, baby! As you can see, the IPS LCD is viewable in every single angle. I'm going to use this right now to play games with it. I'm going to be playing Super Mario Advance for Super Mario Brothers 3 on this refurbished Game Boy Advance with an IPS LCD, baby. I'll choose Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's play, baby. World 1. Let's go to level 1. Let's get the mushroom. Oh no. I'm gonna stop here. So what do I think about the IPS mod for the Game Boy Advance? Well, it's very good. The unbranded IPS LCD V2 ribbon for the Game Boy Advance supports brightness control save. The funny playing IPS LCD V2 ribbon doesn't support saving brightness control. So the reason I prefer the unbranded IPS LCD V2 ribbon is that I can save brightness. So funny playing should have added a brightness save chip on his V2 ribbon, but I'm going to expect funny playing to make a V3 ribbon, which does actually have a brightness save control chip. I mean, a chip that is made for saving brightness control. So, um, yeah. I'm glad you all enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, 
Thank you for watching. Goodbye. For the rest of this video, by the way, you can watch this Super Mario Advance 4 intro. The remainder of the Super Mario Advance 4 intro. Have a nice evening to all YouTubers watching this video.